origins of eukaryotes is pretty amazing. It occurred through a process called endosymbiosis. And this occurred when two cells merged to become one cell. However, most people, I think, get this original endosymbiotic event wrong. And uh, I want to set the record straight. Now, most diagrams of endosymbiosis and theories go something like this. Some early proto-eukaryotic cell that has a, was basically a prokaryote that has evolving to grow a little bit larger and larger and getting an early nucleus somehow engulfs an aerobically respiring bacteria. And then you now have a eukaryotic cell. That is wrong. Let me show you. You had two cells. You had a, a, a bacteria, aerobically respiring bacteria, and you've got an archaean. And somehow this aerobically respiring bacteria, this thing that can use oxygen to like oxidize organic materials and make lots and lots of ATP, bored its way into this cell. And then I now had a couple of cells living together. This is endosymbiosis, okay? And we see bacteria that can bore into other cells. We know this can happen. But this scenario where there was some proto-eukaryotic cell engulfing an aerobically respiring bacteria, no way. Here's why. We see no prokaryotic cells that can do phagocytosis today. Phagocytosis requires a cytoskeleton. So basically, you've got microtubules and actin filaments that are actively moving the membrane around this thing to engulf it and bacteria don't have that. Also, phagocytosis, that is energy intensive. You need lots of ATP to do that. Now, I'm not saying that prokaryotic cells don't have enough ATP. They have plenty to be a prokaryotic cell, but they don't have the complex cytoskeleton to engulf another cell and they don't produce the ATP, the energy to do something like that. And additionally, bacteria would have a cell wall that prevents them from actually moving their cell membrane around a bacteria to engulf it. Now that we pretty much know that endosymbiosis did not occur when an early eukaryotic cell phagocytized another cell, that it was truly the merger of two prokaryotes that formed a single cell. Now that leads us to another problem. There's what we call primary endosymbiosis and secondary endosymbiosis. And uh, primary endosymbiosis, almost everybody defines it as a eukaryotic cell engulfing a prokaryotic cell. And secondary endosymbiosis would be a eukaryotic cell engulfing another eukaryotic cell. Well, I think we should change that. Here's how I think we should define primary, secondary, and tertiary endosymbiosis. Primary, primary endosymbiosis occurred when two prokaryotes, a bacteria and archaean, merged and formed the first prokaryotic cell. Now that we have something in here that can produce lots of energy for these cells, okay, now they can grow larger and more complex. However, now that we've got a eukaryotic cell, this cell, complete with lots of mitochondria, a complex cytoskeleton, including microtubules and actin filaments, they can now do phagocytosis. Okay, so secondary endosymbiosis occurred once we had a fully formed eukaryotic cell complete with mitochondria to produce enough ATP for phagocytosis, and we now have a complex cytoskeleton they can actually move this membrane around and we can engulf a second cell, in this case maybe a um, type of algae or something, and this would be secondary endosymbiosis, and this is how the ancestors to plants acquired chloroplast. So plants have both mitochondria and chloroplast. They were once free living cells. Okay, now tertiary endosymbiosis, this is a new one, tertiary would be where one eukaryotic cell engulfs a second eukaryotic cell. Now, I know that whenever you read most websites, primary is gonna be, you know, uh, a eukaryotic cell engulfing a bacteria, but then what about the original endosymbiosis 
bacteria that occurred 2 billion years ago. I would actually consider that to be the primary endosymbiotic event and everything after that secondary and tertiary. Well, I hope I dispelled these myths and misconceptions about the origins of eukaryotic cells because we know that basically to have a proto-eukaryotic cell just really could not happen energetically. It would just be almost impossible. And we don't see it in nature. So there's, well, there it is. Another biology myth busted. It is almost certainly that endosymbiosis, at least the first time around, did not occur by some phagocytizing cell. It was probably a lucky encounter. Stay tuned for my next myth busting in biology.